So today we're gonna work on a really cool project. It's super easy, super cheap. It's gonna save you so much money doing it this way instead of already having these things built for you. It's really gonna spruce up your room or your finished basement. And for some reason, these seem to be really in style right now. And anybody can do this, it is so easy. So let's just get this video started. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video about refinishing my basement, how much it cost me and how much it was gonna cost you for 2022. I'll put that video at the end of this one. But a lot of people, the subscribers, asked me if I could actually do a video showing them how I built my cable bullet rail style railing. If you buy these prefab, they will run you around $1,500. That's a lot of money. So of course, when the subscriber base asked me to show them how to make these, I said, yes because I love you. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you how I hand built a bullet cable style railing, way cheaper than anything you're gonna find online. Now listen, let me state this before we get this video going. Also, this is my way of doing it. I liked this style and if you don't, I'm sorry. There are a few different ways to doing this and I figured this is the most cost effective, cheapest and easiest way for you to do this in your own home. Let's get it going. All right, so what you're gonna need? Well, this is like a three and a half by three and a half. It's actually a four by four piece of pineage. I bought this at Home Depot. You can find them at Lowe's or any basic hardware store that carries lumber. Don't worry, I'll put all of the hardware and the materials that I use in the description below for you to find them. So you're gonna need two of these and the length of this, well, that was, you see, I needed four posts all together. Buy two posts, cut them in half, you got Four posts. I know, I'm genius. The next thing I needed to buy was, well, the steel cable. This is stuff that you would buy and put it on the outside of your house, right? Your cable railings. This is mostly an outdoor type of deal, but it looks really nice indoors. A lot of people are doing it. It's like the new fashion statement, I guess, or whatever. And this is what people are using. So this is one eighth steel cable. Again, I'll put a link in the description below for you to check this out. You can go larger, thinner, whatever you want to do, but this is what I use, it's one eighth of an inch. By the way, the steel cable cost me <laughs> way cheaper on Amazon than what you're gonna find at Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever, way cheaper. The next thing I had to do is get a new tool. Now this ran me about $32. Again, I'll put everything in the description below. This is not only a cable cutter, but it's also a crimper, and you're gonna need that, and I'll show you why, because we're gonna put it together. This is a cool tool and it's only 32 bucks. Now the next thing you're going to have to pick up at your hardware store, your Home Depot, your Lowe's, wherever you go, my nards, it's funny, is your handrail. Now I used Poplar and it was actually a lot cheaper than the red oak or the harder woods, which is fine because I'm just gonna stain this up anyway and then put some type of shellac on top of it and it's gonna look just great. So these right here cost me, now cost is really determined by how much of this you need. I needed two 10 foot sections. If you went with oak or some other exotic material, it's gonna cost you way more. But this poplar was actually a pretty good deal. And it's stained real nice like. Now the next thing you're gonna need is your hardware. Now you can find these every once in a while in Minards or at Home Depot, but really it's a lot easier to find online on Amazon. Again, link in the description below. These are awesome. And if you're planning on building this like how I'm going to build it in this video, you're also wanting to pick up these brackets here depending on how many you need. But I picked up four for $55. I got the swivel head. You're gonna need these for the top handrail. But this is so much easier and I think it looks really cool because I love that hardware look. It literally takes only a couple minutes to hook up one of these cables. And then obviously you're going to need an impact driver or a drill because you definitely wanna make sure that when you drive these into your post that they are secure, they're not gonna come out because you're putting some tension on these with that steel wire. All right, enough of the blah, blah, blah. Let's get over there, I'm gonna show you how to do this. All right, so here's a railing system on my deck that I'm going to rip out within the next month or two. So we're just gonna use this and uh, yeah, I don't need it no more. All right, so how do you get that sweet, sweet pitch? with those railings. Well, I'm gonna show you. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how many cables you wanna put in here. Now, with this length, I'd probably go at least five. You know, the thicker cables, you can go maybe four. Thinner cables, you wanna go maybe seven. But all I'm going to do is figure out where I'm going to start, up here. I'm gonna measure from here to there, and I'm gonna divide. If this is 35 inches from here to here, divide 35 by five, and that's how many inches you should space that apart. And to find your pitch is rather simple. Well, you're looking at this right here, and you're looking at this right here, just start right here and run that, match the pitch, measure it from here to there, and make sure that it's even, and then every other one, 
measured down should be exactly the same pitch. That's real nice. All right, so this one right here, I would put on the bottom, but for you to have a better viewer experience, I'm actually gonna put it up on the top. That way you can actually see how this thing works. Remember, these two pieces work in conjunction, so it doesn't really matter which way you put them, but I like this on the bottom. This will go on the top, but we're just gonna reverse it for this video. Now, all together, I should have four screws, but I drop one in the grass. Don't worry though, I'll find it with my riding mower tires later this spring. So on this one, you got two holes right there. Now, if I were you and you're going to put this into some nice woodage, well, I would definitely pre-drill those holes, but this is just demonstration purposes and I'm taking this off anyway, so I ain't going through all that. All right, so we're just gonna go with the impact. Like I said, I don't care about the pre-drilled. And what I'm gonna do is I would find where I measured. I would obviously mark that, but I'm just gonna take this right here and I'm just gonna drill that or drive that in like so. Now what's nice about this is you can straighten these out. You put the one screw in, find out where that is plumb, and then put your second screw in there. All right, so this is really important. You can see on these that these things here turn like so. I'm not so much worried about this one, so I'm gonna bring this one actually in all the way down. This is the one I'm concerned about. We have to make sure that we tighten these rails, right, or these cables. So you can see this screws in like so. That is how you tighten the cable. So we're gonna bring this as far out as we can, bring that nut up with it. Okay, we're good to go right there. Now, of course, the next piece that we need goes right there. Mind you, I'm not trying to be all exact. I'm just trying to show you how these things hook up, but we'll just put it like right here. I'm just gonna put a temporary cheap screw in here because I don't want this coming off and smacking me in my face. So this is where the fun part begins, right here. You see, we're gonna slice and dice some of that cable right here, and this is how I do it right here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, run that out through like so, and this is gonna go into that like so. See that? Problem is, if I don't crimp this right here, well, it's just gonna come out like so. We don't want that. So that's where our tool comes in. Now, what's cool about this tool is a two-in-one. Got your cutters right here. So you put your cable in, cut it, works great. And you also have different sizes for different cables. All right, so let's do it real quick. We're gonna take it, we'll just run it up through like so. It doesn't matter if I'm running through these right here because I gotta cut the bottom piece off. And then you just take your tool and crimp it. Now you're gonna wanna crimp this at least one more time. You want extra safety right there. Put all the way down, crimp it, bring it back up. It ain't going anywhere. All right, so we're good to go right here. And now all we gotta do is connect it to the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this down. I'm gonna bring this down like this, bring this out like so, and I'm just gonna mark it right here. You don't even need a tape measure. Remember that right there? Well, we're just gonna cut it. So put that in there like so, bring it down. It's easier to do with two people, one helping you, but that's all you gotta do. This is done. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it in there, and I'm gonna crimp this like we did the other one. Start down here, it's easier, and then move one up a little bit. Give it a little bit of spacing, crimp again. Okay, cool. All right, so right now we got a problem. Look how loose that is. We don't want that like that right now. So what we gotta do is tighten this up. But remember that last part that I told you had to unloosen? Well, this is why. We loosen this up like that so we can tighten this cable, if that makes sense. We're not worried about this down here. But if I tighten this up like so, watch what happens to that cable. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, it's tightening. It's tightening up, yeah. So this cable right here now has some nice tension. I can make it even tighter if I wanted to simply by turning this, or you can get maybe an Allen wrench, put it in that hole right there, and then tighten it up like that. But I noticed hand tight, just fine. And when you do get this tightened up like so, you have to make sure that this nut right here, you have to tighten it down really hard with a wrench so it doesn't loosen up on you. And there you go, nice and snug. You don't have to worry about me falling off the steps and hitting my face. I don't want this on there no more. Eh. But what about the posts right here? How did I attach those to the stairs or the treads, whatever you want to call them? Well, that's even easier. Let me show you. But only if you smoosh that like button first. Go on. Right there. All right, so all together, the tools that I used was a miter saw, a table saw, 
And that's really about it to cut this. But here's the thing, you don't need either one of those. If you wanna go cheap, you can use the Japanese pull saw, which I'll put a link in the description below as well. And you can make these cuts with that. It only cost you a couple bucks. All right, so here's my dilemma. I didn't want the post sitting right on the treads. I didn't want it to make the stairs too narrow. And that was an issue for me. So what I had to do was make a couple cuts. And let me show you how I did it. All right, I still need to add some caulking on this, but you can see it wraps around that bottom plate. It also wraps into the stair right there. And this is how you can do this. So all you do is find out which stair or step or tread you wanna put your post on. You're gonna run this up to here like so, and you're gonna cut out a little notch to go up on these steps. You see these treads stick out about two inches right here. So all I'm gonna do is mark this with a pencil, go straight across, go up underneath, mark that where this is at, and then I'm gonna measure back two inches and cut that out. So now you can see everything is blacked out right here. You're just gonna cut that out with whatever saw that you have, but it's gonna be notched out and there's not going to be anything where those black drawings are. Now, once you cut this out, you're going to be able to slide this back into the tread and get your second measurement. All you have to do once you get that notched out and it's all the way back up against that back end of the stairs, you're gonna bring it up like this. You're just gonna take your pencil, slide it down like so. And now you have a mark on the bottom of this thing right here. You're gonna cut and then you're gonna cut this right in half up to here. So instead of this one part being four inches around, it's only gonna be about two inches, which is gonna allow you a lot more room on your tread. So again, right here, you're gonna cut down. Right here, you're gonna cut up and take this whole section out, leaving you just this part right here. And then everything fits into place just perfectly. Put a couple screws or a couple lag bolts in there, lag screws, whatever, and that's gonna stay firm. And now all you gotta do is cut your banisters the length that you need them. Again, mine are 10 foot. You get the adjustable head brackets like I showed you. Bend it down, just screw it in, do the next one on the top, and that is it. Now, if you say to yourself that you absolutely have to have steel or stainless instead of your wood post, I would say go to a metal yard. You can find it way cheaper than you're gonna be able to on Lowe's or Home Depot and fabricate it yourself with a couple holes. These brackets right here that come for the cables that hold them in place, which I showed you, they actually come with bolts that you can use to secure that into metal instead of wood. That's real nice. Like. But all in all, you can do this stuff so much cheaper than what you can do when you go out and try to look for these things already pre-made. It's very simple, anybody can do it. And I just told you, you don't need the most expensive tools in the world to pull this off. You can get away with a pull saw, a drill, an impact driver, and that's really about it. I believe in you. Hopefully you believe in me and get subscribed, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos like this one right here. I always appreciate you stopping by with that. We'll be back with more videos soon.